Speaking of Joe, our guest in this segment is Dr. Joseph DeSoto, physician, scientist with an MD in medicine, PhD in pharmacology, and a doctorate in national security. He's the editor of the Journal of Virology Research, Advanced Biochemistry Research, ACTA Pediatrics and Internal Medicine Letters, Certified in Medical Ethics and Clinical Research from the National Institute of Health. He's published over 300 peer-reviewed papers and was awarded the Distinguished International Scientist Award. He's also a candidate for the House of Delegates in the 91st. Joe, good morning. Good morning, Rob. Good, good to have you back. Likewise, it's always an honor to be with two people who care so much about the community. I appreciate that. I love that. you guys. Right, it's great to have you here, and we yeah. send the love right back to you. Right? Thank you. We've done a lot of shows about vaccines recently, and we're going to have Dr. Alvin Moss on next week on, I believe, Wednesday morning. You had uh, got in touch with me and said you'd also like to address the vaccine issue, as this Absolutely. is one of your specialties. Yes. Yes, sir. So um, today, by the age of six, most children have had 36 vaccine doses. Now, recently there was a paper by Hooker and Miller at Sage Medicine, and just like any other medical treatment, vaccines have a cost benefit. And the patient should be informed of that, and I'll talk about that a little bit about medical ethics. Mm -hmm. And the issue with the government interfering with the doctor-patient relationship can have catastrophic effects. Now, currently, uh, if you take the recommend with the established uh, West Virginia, with the required by law, you have a 218% increase in the chance of autism, 449% chance increase of asthma, 213% increase in ear infection, 126% increase in the risk of, of cracking your skull from loss of equilibrium, and 147% increase in gastrointestinal disorders. These are real side effects. This is if you get the vaccination, the childhood vaccine. That's correct. Measles, mumps, rubella, polio, whatever. That's correct. And that includes chicken pox, hepatitis B, measles, meningitis, diphtheria, rubella, tetanus and whooping cough. And where do you get your numbers, Joe? These numbers are from this paper here. It's a, <laughs> what does that come from? <laughs> this is a peer-reviewed article <clears throat> from Brian Hooker and Miller, and it's in Sage uh, Medicine. And they're similar to the numbers, I, the earlier published numbers, but this is a recent article, and it's very good. Well, I want to ask you about the autism thing, because uh, this was something that was concerning a few years back, and, and the uh, response has been that that has been debunked. You disagree with that? That's nonsense. It's a medical quackery by the CDC. Now, why is the CDC is run by political individuals. It's not run by the scientists or the doctors. And they take their orders from the pharmaceutical industry and the uh, and the and the government. And you know how that works. You know this force medicines, and then we'll kick back this to the political campaign. Now, what they're looking at the difference between this paper and what CDC does. This is a three-year follow-up. Mm -hmm. CDC will look at something for thirty days. You're not going to pick up autism in thirty days, and so they do that kind of a manipulation say well we looked at it there's no autism well you're not going to find that type of side effect in it and with that type of follow-up or they'll bury it in the statistics and which i've saw them do a lot of times and so it's just we talk let's talk about the, the sars vaccine for instance um we know that the chances uh there's been two thousand children who have died with sudden death due to the SARS vaccine for COVID. Is that in America? In the United States. Due to or children who have had? That's the whole thing. There's not one case of a child dying from the virus unless they were immunocompromised in the United States. There's not one verifiable case. Okay? Now, there's stories, but there's not one verifiable case. If you're a child, and I, I, that's, an, that's a scientific discussion, I can tell you why that is. But if you take the vaccine as a child, your risk is the vaccine. It's not COVID, mm -hmm. unless you're immunocompromised. Well, let's, let's take COVID out of it, okay. because we know, we know all about uh, COVID, and it, it 
just creates a whole nother uh, bees nest. No. So let, let's stay on the childhood vaccines that that most 90 something percent of children end up getting so they can go to public school. Yeah. So let's start with medical ethics. OK. God forbid you get cancer. Okay. Already been there. OK. So I've it once. And so on my left hand, I say this treatment A will give you a 80 percent survival risk, but it may hurt your heart. Mm hmm. Treatment B will give you a 75% survival, but it may hurt your kidneys, okay? And, and this is these are real choices that medicines give people basically right, every right. day. And so now I have to advise you, well, if you have a heart problem, I'm not giving you A. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a problem with your kidney, I'm not giving you B. But let's say you have neither, okay? I tell you the benefits and the risks. It's your decision, along with your loved ones who care about you the most, which one to do. And you could also say, I just want to die. Mm -hmm. So with the vaccine, you're giving them basically a, an infection, a mild infection, when they're not sick. So informed consent, as a physician, we can go to jail for that, for trying to force you which is unethical and so how is it man we're going to force a vaccine when you're not even sick and the vaccines have risk some are more or less than others and so and then the other issue is a one-size-fits-all depending on your genetics your risk factors and your comorbidities it may change which vaccines are useful or not useful for you. And so by the government just willy-nilly saying you need to take all these vaccines, that does two things. The more vaccines you have, the higher your risk for side effects. There's also Guillain-Barre disease, which will be permanent up to, can be up to permanent paralysis mm -hmm. or temporary. That's always the risk. And in addition, the, the mandatory, va like, let's take hepatitis B. The only way you get hepatitis B is through blood. The risk factor for a child of getting hepatitis B is almost zero. So why are they taking that vaccine? Okay. Does it protect you as you're an adult? That's debatable because it over time, vaccines lose their effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And even as an adult. You have to, you still have to get uh, in, in, from the blood of somebody else. Yeah, but as a as an infant, I'm unlikely to come in contact with other people's blood. As I go through childhood, I am much more likely to come in contact with other people's blood. But then that are you going to have a skin opening on yourself? It has to get into your bloodstream. Oh, as a kid, you fall down all the time. You're I always know. scraping a knee. But then chin. that blood has to transfer to say to him, mm -hmm. and he has to have an opening in his body. So it takes two wounds. The probability of that happening is what? Well, a lot not, of kids play sports. Hard. I mean, that happens in sports and all the then, time. And then, if that's the case, then the parent can decide. They play sports. They may need the vaccine. Mm -hmm. But if his kids don't play sports and they just like to read, why should they take the vaccine? And see, what I just did is I took it back to you. Yeah. You know what's best for your child, not me. And certainly not the government. Are you, don't we have, don't we have, ahead, to, don't we have to take this back to history where um, smallpox and typhus and polio and measles and diphtheria and cholera and you pick all of these horrible diseases that ripped through communities and killed God knows how many people. And that's why we have these vaccines. We know how they spread. And th that's why we vaccinated communities and in nearly eliminated some i guess in some cases we have eliminated them very few so we we force people or we encourage people to get vaccines i think while while they're really hot everybody wants to have them right because all their friends are dying and then a generation passes and we forget about how awful these are and now people say, well, you know, I've never known anybody that had polio, so I'm going to I'm going to roll the dice. And as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I am not a doctor, but I understand it as diseases, viruses recur, 
they they strive to survive and as they find new hosts they will um uh evolve what's the um yeah you're right you're, right. you're right, a smart man to to continue to survive and they, they'll come the point that as they mutate that's where i was going for as they mutate they will find a way to survive among vaccinated populations and then get all those vaccinated people sick too or many of those vacuum vaccinated people sick you're right so that would be the Bingo. reason to force people to get vaccinated. No, it isn't. Because what's happening is the viruses will mutate around the vaccine. So let's take the HPV vaccine. Um, it, it protects uh, against nine of the HPV viruses, subtypes that cause cervical cancer. But there's 40 that can cause cervical cancer. And so... What happens is, is when it first came out, it was 40% effective. Now it's only 20% effective because the viruses will mute, either mutate around it or give the other viruses an evolutionary boost to evolve. But and if then, everybody, correct me, just, if, if everyone were vaccinated, there would be no more hosts, theoretically. Theoretically. So... The virus would but have no host and the virus would go about, away. You're talking about only certain viruses. Most viruses have hundreds of subtypes. And so even the most effective vaccine is only going to hit a, a small portion. The flu vaccine hits 10%. HPV, it hits, what, 20, 25%. Polio. And then the polio, well, the, that's another issue. There hasn't been a case of polio here for 30 years. You're not, but it thrives what, it in thrives Afghanistan? in Afghanistan and it thrives in Pakistan. And we have are, them are coming you going, here. Are you going to, well, that's another issue. Okay. And so those people can be screened. Okay. But if there hasn't been a case here for 30 years, why are you taking the vaccine? What's your chances of getting infected? Zero. Zero. So why are you taking the vaccine? And it's an infection. They give you a small infection. And there's been studies done of healthy adults, those who have never been vaccinated versus those who have taken the recommended vaccination. Those who have never been vaccinated are healthier. If they survived. Correct, correct. And that's, again, the risk, a risk. But again, going back to medical ethics, you know, it's fundamental. Why is the government telling you and your doctor what's best for you when you're different from me and you're different from him? Well, I, I'm not a legal expert, but there was a case brought up before the Supreme Court dealing with the public health and the public good. And I suppose that's where these rulings came from. So. Uh, not that Supreme Court cases can't be overturned over time. We saw that, uh, obviously, the Supreme, in the last year. How many members of the Supreme Court can even tell you what a virus is? Well, G, but Joe, you're going down dangerous ground when you do that, because now now we're going to say that we can void every Supreme Court decision no, what, if the members was, of the court aren't saying, experts on the subject matter in front of them. Especially not medicine. Any subject. The doc, your doctor and you should be the only ones determining your treatment, not the Supreme Court. Do you have any obligation to the public around you, Joe? You do. What is your obligation? The obligation is, as a health care provider, is to treat to the best of my ability and to advise the patient. But it ends there. No, I, I'm not talking about you as a doctor. I'm talking about you as a citizen. Is to educate those around me. Okay, I don't have the right to force a vaccine that is going to cause a 218 percent chance of your child becoming autistic. Which, again, CDC says that was debunked. Again, your, your, wrong. your study wrong. says there isn't otherwise. A single high-level scientist who agrees with them. Not a single high-level scientist. Not one. Not one high-level. There's scientist people that have high-level positions. But they haven't published a peer review article in their life. Now, just because a person is an, a physician does not make them an expert. It makes them a practitioner. Do the vaccines work? I guess is the real question. Do they work? It depends on which vaccine. 
okay? Some, the flu vaccine, 10%, HPV, 20%. Well, not, no one mandates a flu vaccine, except okay. certain government entities, I think, and maybe some other organizations might mandate their employees get a Let's flu take shot. a look at chicken pox. Mandated. You can get chicken pox, and you can get herpes zoster from that vaccine because they're giving you an attenuated vaccine. It can mutate, back, it can back mutate to become live. And people will die from that. Well, there are people that... Hold on, Joe. So we give children vaccines, okay? If the vaccines aren't effective, then why do we not still have these outbreaks in areas where people follow the the vaccine mandates? Why don't we have measles outbreaks routinely? Why aren't kids dying of polio? We We have measles in 17 states right now, and... Most of them are usually traced around people that hadn't been vaccinated or particular yeah, now, religious groups or organizations that don't get vaccinated. Measles is others. The ones that are that are made out of aborted fetuses are chicken pox, rubella, some of the COVID, and hepatitis A. Okay? Um, rubella is, uh, I would recommend that. But now we're talking about First Amendment rights, so, you know, and and again, that's a constitutional right to freedom of religion, and that's a slippery slope. I'm not going to tell somebody, because if you have a secular viewpoint, maybe you don't care about their religious beliefs, but in a sense, your secular viewpoint is a religion. So why are you forcing your religious belief on somebody else? They should, They can be educated whoever they are, and they don't all agree. I want to go down that, this route I want to go down. You will agree, I think everybody agrees. Um, if, if, if I say you can't enter my home unless you show proof of vaccination, I have every right to do that That's because you. it's my home. Right. So if I say you cannot enter the Gilstrap school, your kids cannot come to the Gilstrap school unless your kids are vaccinated. Absolute right to do that. That's if it's private. Right. So. If we have the Berkeley County Public Schools and the Berkeley County electorate says, okay, you cannot send your kid to our schools because we have decided that we require vaccinations, why is that not the same thing? Because it's not the electorate, it's usually health care. It's usually someone in, it's, a, it's usually an appointed official. And in this state, most of the appointed officials in healthcare don't know don't know a hill of beans about vaccines. Would it be different if it's a referendum? I still even with the referendum. Okay, what if the referendum is take away guns from everybody? No, let's stick on this one. No, it's, that's the analogy. So now, because ninety percent of the people, maybe they want to say, no, but well, the Second Amendment is very clear. Okay, let's, it's okay, a let's, let's take let's take Muslims. They don't like vaccines that are made from pig pig, mm-hmm. pig products. So now everyone else is going to decide that hey, we're going to ignore your religious belief and force you to take this vaccine, or maybe it's a Catholic, and you know, there's a lot of Catholics in this community. Mm-hmm. Maybe they they they're against abortion, so you're going to force Catholics just because the majority is Protestant to take a vaccine. That's a fundamental violation of the U.S. Constitution and their rights. Just like it would be if you tried to grab guns, and I see no difference. That's why we have a U.S. Constitution and a Bill of Rights to prevent that type of nonsense. We have to stand for free speech. We have to stand for freedom of religion. We have to stand for gun rights. We have to stand for, you know, for right to be protected in our own homes. Those are constitutional rights. And as soon as we don't follow that, we've lost who we are as a country. And so... Joe, i got about 30 seconds left. So, let's say you get your way and... Nobody has to get a vaccination anymore in the country. 20 years from now, are we still having problems with uh, measles, mumps, rubella, polio? Uh, is that all coming back, or, or does, does this solve your problem? We still have that problem now. No, we don't. Yes, we do. We have, there's, 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 there's it's very been, isolated, Joe. You know two, there's that. Been, oh, I don't. It's very isolated. You, okay, you're not, the, you're not following the science the, daily. The like country, do, is, the country has respect. measles outbreaks in some communities right now where kids didn't get vaccinated. 
there's 17 states where it's reported. There's not, not, not 100,000 people with measles right work. now. Hey, I am understanding, Joe, that I'm out of time on this segment. We've got a final minute coming up right after we do this. Don't go away.